Well, hello, friends. Hope your day is going well today. Yeah, so glad to be here to share another story with you today. Today's story is taken from the scripture of when the little boy brought his lunch to Jesus. But it's written by Max Lucado, and he has added some of those things that we just don't know about. What well, makes a wonderful story. Our little boy in the story, he named Elijah. And this book is called Small Gifts in God's Hands. I hope you enjoy. Elijah, Elijah. It was Aaron, uh, Elijah's cousin and best friend. Come see what teacher Jesus did. My father's boat is so full of fish, it's almost sinking. None of the fishermen caught anything all night, and the teacher convinced them to try again. And now, father's boat and another boat are overflowing with fish. Elijah looked toward his mother. She was standing in the doorway holding a basket, the one he used to carry fish from shore. She handed him the basket, smiling her approval, and the two boys were off and running. Within moments, the two boys were in the thick of the crowd, elbowing their way to where the boats had pulled ashore. Just as Aaron had said, the boats were so full that the fish were tumbling over the sides and splashing back into the water. Aaron's father, Peter, was talking loudly and gesturing wildly. The teacher, Jesus, was sitting on the edge of the boat, feet in the sand, smiling. He seemed to be enjoying the moment. Ever so often, he would chuckle and shake his head at Peter's description. It was after one such chuckle that his eyes met those of Elijah. Elijah gathered up some of the fish and hurried home to tell his mother what the teacher had done. She laughed at the imitation of Peter's excitement. Mother, the teacher looked at me. Elijah stopped and thought for a moment. You know how it feels when the morning sun chases the chill off the sea? He was like that when Jesus looked at me. I felt warm and happy. Later that day, when all the chores were done, Elijah was still talking about the fish in Peter's boat. Mother, Uncle Peter let the teacher use a boat. I wish we had something he could use. He looked around at their tiny house. There wasn't much to see. The jars and cooking pots and baskets, the broom in the corner and the lamp and the mats on the floor. We don't have anything big enough to give. Miriam touched her son's cheek. If the teacher is who they say he is, the size of the gift doesn't matter to God. God can do big things with a small gift. Elijah shrugged and sighed, but said nothing. It was a week before Elijah heard that Jesus was back in the village. This time it was Joseph, Aaron's neighbor, who came running with the news. He asked my father if our house could be barred for the afternoon, and he's there right now, and so is half a Galilee. The three hurried to Joseph's house, but there was no way they could see the teacher. Every doorway was packed. People were sitting in the window. Four men had even gone up on the roof and lowered someone on a mat down through a hole. Joseph's father had the largest house in town, and it still couldn't hold all the people. I'd love for him to use our house, Elijah told his mother that night as he rolled out his bed. But it wouldn't do him any good. It's too small. Everything we have is too small. Miriam smiled and put her arm around her boy. Remember what I said, son. If Jesus is who they say he is, he can do big things with a small gift. The next day, Elijah and Miriam went to a special meal at Peter's house. Everyone had questions about the teacher. Peter told story after story about Jesus. One caught Elijah's attention. It was about a woman and a jar of perfume. When she heard Jesus was in town, she went to where he was eating and poured the perfume on his feet. While the story inspired everyone else, it discouraged young Elijah. He wanted so badly to give something to Jesus, but he had no expensive perfume. He had no house. He had no boat. He had nothing. Still wishing he had something big to give Jesus, Elijah's mother asked as they were walking home. He nodded. As I've said, if the teacher is who they say he is, he doesn't need big things. I know, I know, Elijah interrupted. God can do big things with a small gift. Miriam smiled at her son. I've been thinking, she said. Let's get up early tomorrow and go hear the t what the teacher has to say. Peter says he's not far from here. Elijah was so excited he could hardly sleep that night for thinking about Jesus. When Elijah awoke, the sun had yet to appear. 
careful not to disturb his mother, he filled a basket with fish and bread to take with them. By the time Miriam awoke, both her son and the food were ready to go. Soon the two of them were climbing the hillside with many others who were also going to hear Jesus. It took them a long time. Elijah had never seen so many people. There were thousands. Aaron had saved space for them close to the front. The time passed quickly as they sat on the grass listening to Jesus teach and watching him heal the sick. A long line of people waited to see the teacher. Parents with children, people on crutches, elderly with weak backs and eyes, all wanted a moment with Jesus. Aaron pointed to his father, Peter, in a group huddled behind Jesus. They're worried about the size of the crowd. I heard them asking, how are all these people going to eat? About that time, a group of men walked to Jesus. You must tell the people to go home, one man said. They're tired, and we have no food to feed them. Jesus looked out over the crowd, and then back to the followers. You feed them, he said. The men were silent. How could they feed them? What little food they had would not feed so many people. If only we'd brought more food, Miriam said sadly. What we have with us is so small. Elijah smiled. He knew exactly what to do. If Jesus is who they say he is, Mother, he can do big things with a small gift. Elijah picked up the basket he had packed with bread and fish that morning. As he took it to one of Jesus' followers, Elijah looked at the teacher. And when he did, Jesus looked back and smiled. Elijah didn't know what would happen, but he knew something would happen. The follower gave the basket to Jesus, and the teacher took the food, then looked to heaven and prayed. What happened next, Elijah would never forget. It was as if the basket had no bottom. People pulled up one piece of bread after another, one fish after another. Every person on the hillside was fed, and food was left over. At one point, as the people were eating, Elijah noticed that Jesus was looking at him. When Elijah looked back, the teacher smiled, and when Jesus smiled, Elijah's heart felt warm and happy, the way it had the day he saw Jesus by the fishing boats. Elijah never forgot that look, and he never forgot what he learned. He remembered both many months later as he and Aaron and Peter stood on a hill near Jerusalem. They watched from a distance as the teacher was hung on a cross. All three of them were very sad. He's giving his life as a gift to save the world, his uncle said sadly. But he has just one life, said Aaron, and the world is so big. How can one life save everyone? It seems like such a small gift. Elijah squeezed his uncle's hand and smiled because he knew the answer. No gift is small in God's hands. Thank you for listening today. And I would like for you to think about what gift can you give? No matter how small, given to God, it can do great things. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.